State University of New York at Downstate Medical Center is your center for healthcare excellence. Housed in an urban setting in Brooklyn, New York, Downstate is one of 64 campuses in the State University system and the only medical school in Brooklyn. More New York City doctors graduate from Downstate than from any other medical school in the country. Health Center is sponsored by SUNY Downstate and delivers up-to-date information in healthcare and community outreach programming. Its university hospital is known for its centers of excellence, quality patient care, cutting edge education, as a major scientific research center, and for its emergency room, which is open 24 hours. SUNY Downstate's educational programming includes our School of Graduate Studies, which has trained some of the world's best scientists and teachers, including Dr. Robert Furchgott, winner of the 1998 Nobel Prize in Medicine. Also included are the College of Health-Related Professions, the College of Nursing, and our nationally recognized School of Public Health. With so much to offer, there's no better place you can depend on downstate. From the Health Center at SUNY Downstate, this is Star for Brooklyn. Welcome to Star for Brooklyn. My name is Tanya Taylor. My name is Christopher Jimenez. Um, Tanya, this is really exciting. This is awesome. Star for Brooklyn highlights cool people across all the five boroughs talking about how do we stay healthy. Yeah, you know, and um, our first guest, I think he's going to talk a little bit about that and, and some other things that are really important. Excellent. Our first guest today is Dr. Jack Dehovitz, who is the uh, a Distinguished Service Professor in the College of Medicine at SUNY Downstate Medical Center, and he is also the director, the founding director of the STAR program. Dr. Dehovitz has a Master's in Public Health. He has a Master's in Healthcare Delivery Services, no, Science, and is a Fellow of the American College of Physicians. Please welcome Dr. Dehovitz. Welcome. Hi guys. Thank hey. you so much for having me today. Hey, Great to how have are you? Here. Thank good, you for coming. Good. Welcome. Nice to see you. So, uh, Dr. Dehovitz or Jack? You know, Jack's going to be just fine. Please. Great. Great. Excellent. So, uh, Jack, now that we're about to be big television stars, um, I want to I want to ask you, what is your, you know, what is what are some of your favorite TV shows right now? Are you excited for anything? Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, um, I, I'm sort of politically involved and engaged, so I, my favorite station is probably MSNBC, um, which I uh, go to every day. Um, and um, other than that, I probably spend a lot of time reading the newspaper. So not excited for the final season of Game of Thrones, basically. Yeah, uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I'm, I think my kids are, but I'm not. I miss that. I'll, I'll fill you in if anything. Yeah, Thank you, you need to binge watch all yes. the seasons. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so, Jack, you know, um, first thing I'd like to ask you, um, you know, what is the STAR program? You know, that's such a great question. Uh, well, first of all, STAR program stands for Special Treatment and Research. Um, and we utilize those uh, initials to really highlight the activities of the whole program, which really reflect the fact that we care for patients uh, in the Central Brooklyn community and now beyond. Um, we conduct research on many of the challenges faced by residents of our borough. Um, and equally important, but not included in the name, is the fact we do education and training. So we're really training the next generation of providers to provide care in settings such as uh, Brooklyn, the Bronx, or New York City. Excellent. I have a question. So, you know, w when did the STAR program start? That is such a good question. So <laughs> we started in uh, 1990, mm -hmm. um, and at that point we were funded uh, both for a large research grant as well as a, uh, a clinical grant to develop one of the first HIV clinics in Brooklyn, um, focusing actually on all patients with HIV, but with a real academic and clinical focus on women with HIV, which was a huge problem at the time and of course remains so to this day. What, what kind of services do you provide for 
patients who are living with well, HIV? Well, uh, our current um, uh, breadth of services is quite broad. Of course, we provide primary care, HIV care, uh, psychiatric care, counseling, wow. substance use care, um, but also women's health care. That's quite um, right, and, um, and a wide range of preventive services to hopefully prevent, prevent people from acquiring HIV. Wow, that's awesome. So, uh, Jack, what motivated you personally um, to become a, a physician and to uh, start the STAR program? Wow, um, another good question. Well, first, um, I guess as a physician, I have to say that um, I, my father's a physician and that played a very great role in terms of my interest in this career. And as a medical student, I was interested in infectious diseases and its intersection with public health. So um, as a resident, I pursued training in, in both infectious diseases and public health. And I think that sort of set me up to deal with one of the largest public health challenges of our time. Yeah. Were you here in New York when the epidemic started? or were I you? was. Um, actually, I did my internship at St. Vincent's Hospital in the Greenwich Village, which um, was literally where the first cases were identified. And I, I clearly remember these young men coming in with uh, this really devastating illness that we had no idea what was going on and unfortunately yeah. dying soon thereafter. So it has truly been uh, a key aspect of my entire career. So you're one of the pioneers in terms of physicians taking care of people living with HIV. I and many Here others in of my cohort, yeah. yes, yeah, absolutely. Jack, I mean, could you ever, when those first days started, could you ever imagine a time where we would have the medicines we have now where people can live, you know, 70s, 80s, you know, with this illness? You know, that's such an interesting question. Given my interest in infectious diseases, I was so struck as a young physician in our lack of uh, ability to, to treat any viruses. We had no, no real court, uh, treatment for viruses. And now we have a variety of, of interventions, not only for HIV, but for hepatitis C, and a whole wide range of other viruses. It's really Jack, amazing. What would, what we, before we end, we would love to know, like, what is your vision for, uh, for the STAR program in the future? Well, Where do you see the STAR program? You know, the STAR program continues to grow, and obviously mm -hmm. the breadth of our services have expanded beyond HIV disease, primary care, substance use treatment. Um, and not only has it expanded here at SUNY Downstate, but we've also expanded to at least one other site in the borough, to Brookdale. Um, and you know, my dream, I guess, is that we can become a key player in enhancing the quality of life for many residents of Central Brooklyn. And so I'm looking to use the STAR template in other settings so we can raise the quality of, of life and the level of health care for all the residents of Central Brooklyn. Excellent. Before we end, we, we wanted to just mention the new initiative that you're promoting, the Be Healthy For You program. And to um, just let you know that they're launching a campaign and we encourage everyone to upload a video and tell us how do you stay healthy and to don't forget to put a hashtag be healthy for you so that we can also learn from you in terms of other strategies that we could follow to stay healthy. Dr. Uh, Jack, thank you <laughs> so much for coming. Yeah, please come back. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me today. A lot thank of fun. You. I'm Chrissy. My name is Phil. My name is Dylan. I'm a college student. I have a busy lifestyle where I'm at school every day. We all have busy lives, so it's very important that you take a moment for yourself. Um, give yourself that me time. When you realize um, that you're giving yourself that me time, you notice how much more um, your, life, your life is in balance and it flows a lot better. I'm a graduate student and I spend about 60 hours a week on my education. In order to maintain mental and physical health, I spend a lot of time at the gym. Every day, about an hour a day, I'm in the gym, I'm lifting weights and putting weights back down and lifting them again. <laughs> I use running as a form of exercise to help maintain my stress levels. You do things like rushed or just because someone wants you to, you notice that your body isn't in agreement with that. So that's why meditating is very important. You take those anywhere from five to 30 minutes to just align yourself, just to be one with yourself and sit quiet in the moment. And you will see how that plays a great part 
on your health. I also maintain uh, sexual health consciousness as well. So every three to six months, I get checked, I get a full spectrum uh, STI, STD check, and I make sure that I take my prep, and I also make sure that I stay in mostly monogamish relationships. <laughs> I incorporate it into my daily regime, uh, just like I do with PrEP. Checking your status is very important. I get my status checked once a year. I am healthy for me. I'm be healthy for me. Be, be healthy for you. Be healthy for you. Be healthy for you. Hi, my name is Jack Dehovitz. I'm an infectious disease specialist, and I direct the STAR program, which is a large, comprehensive program serving those here in Brooklyn, many of whom are living with HIV. I'm thrilled to be inaugurating an important campaign called Be Healthy For You. With this, we're helping everybody to maintain and enhance their own health. I, of course, think about this on a daily basis for myself. For example, I try to work out two or three times a week knowing that that allows me to be healthy for my family, my colleagues at work, and of course, for those that I care for. So with this, we're reaffirming that I'm healthy for me and you should be healthy for you. Welcome back, folks. I am so excited to be talking about this new campaign, Be Healthy For You. What do you do to stay healthy? You know, Tony, that's a great question. But before I answer that, I actually want to bring somebody in to the studio to speak with us. Uh, she's a friend and colleague, and I think she's gonna have some really great pointers on how we can stay healthier in uh, our lives. I totally need that. Okay, bring her on. Hey. Hi. Hey, Michelle. How you doing? Hi. Great to Happy see you. Happy to be here. Yay. So, Michelle Melendez, um, like I said, my friend and colleague for the past seven years. Uh, she is the Behavioral Health Director of the STAR Health Center. She's a certified health coach, and she also is the facilitator for the monthly SUNY Downstate Self-Help Meetup Group and she's gonna give us some tips on self-care and just how to stay healthy in general. Um, so first off, Michelle, I guess I wanna ask, what exactly is self-care? Yeah. Well, self-care is any activity that we do on a consistent basis to improve our overall well-being. Um, some of those areas of our health can include, obviously, our physical bodies, but our mental health, our emotional health, spiritual health, financial health, social, making sure that we have a positive social support network. So self-care is individually defined. I mean, these are just some of the areas um, that you can practice self-care in, but again, it's, it's individually defined in the areas that I just mentioned. So I'm sitting at a desk all day and my back is killing me. What, what can I do in terms of taking care of myself at work? Sure, well, there's many things that you can do. Um, you mentioned pain in your back. So sometimes if you're sitting at a desk all day, it could be your posture, maybe you're hunching over, oh, yeah. you may be tense. It could be related to the kind of work that you're doing, okay. maybe that you're tensing up. Mm -hmm. So getting up periodically, um, again, as realistically as you can, you know, maybe in intervals of maybe 15, 20 minutes, getting up, even if it's to get some water, get a snack, just get up and move can help. Okay. Um, and of course, checking in with your doctor to make sure that your back is fine. So, Michelle, I, I guess that's one of the things I want to speak about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, people in general, you know, they'll say, um, you know, what, what difference does this make, right? Like, so I get up and sure. I walk around a little bit. Um, you know, does it is it really going to help me? Am I really going to lose weight? And uh, what would you say to those people? Well, in this example, sure, getting up to, to the water cooler may not help you lose weight because it's not that vigorous, right? But there are benefits of getting up because in the example, especially for many of us that are at a desk all day, um, especially if we're not eating well, let's say we're skipping lunch, so our energy could plummet, Wait, right? Wait, skipping lunch is bad for you? Yes, of course, yeah. We need to refuel our body, right? So it's not just about eating any old lunch, but mm -hmm. making sure we're eating something nutritious, okay. right? Because what we, we are what we eat, right? The old cl cliche, right? So yeah. if we eat something nutritious, then it will also help us with our work performance. Think about it. How many people do you work with at, at 3 o'clock? That's it. They're finished. They're ready to go home, right? Mm -hmm. And lots of times it has to do with either they're skipping lunch or maybe their meal wasn't as nutritious as it could be. So, you know, being mindful about what we're eating, 
um, during the day. And I know for some people, they may not have access to go to the cafeteria or actually sit down and have a yeah. meal, but having things like in your pocket, little healthy snacks that you can munch on throughout the day will sustain your energy, not only physically, but also mentally, right? So that we can perform at our best when we're at work. So what can we do to relieve stress? Like I'm working mommy, I'm working a lot here, I am missing lunch sometimes, but what can I do to like help reduce the stress in my life? Sure, so you know, first off, it's about identifying things that you would enjoy to do, right? Because it's not self-care if you don't enjoy it, right? It should feel self-nourishing, it should feel good. So it's not about, oh, this is what this person is doing, let me do their plan. No, it's about you defining what are those things that um, make me feel good. And, and when I went back to earlier to mentioning the several domains of self-care, where we talked about you know the mental, the emotional, social, physical, it's identifying where do you need the most attention right yeah. now? And that's where you can start. So perhaps you may be having aches and pains or your low energy, right? Maybe that's the part of your health right now, I guess that's asking for more attention, right? Where you're feeling yeah. more of the feeling. Well, that's where you can start. And, and the idea is to start small. So even just doing one thing a day in that area where you're feeling you need the most attention is big progress. You know what I do to my self-care? I go do karaoke every week. Great. And I mm -hmm. love it. It's sure. so silly. It's so good. Mm -hmm. You know, Michelle, um, one thing you mentioned there, and, and, I, and I think it's kind of important to, uh, to highlight. So you, you spoke about uh, not mm -hmm. just physical, not just nutritional, sure. but also emotional, spiritual. Sure. Sure. Um, this holistic concept that Absolutely. it's more than just, you know, doing the things that we know we have sure. to do. Um, so what, what are some of what are some of the things that you would recommend to people in terms of you know emotional self care in the workplace where there's so much going on you know you're mm -hmm. trying to meet meet deadlines you're trying to interact uh, you know with uh, you know your colleagues you know in, in this setting you know we work in a clinic with our patients so what are some of the ways that we can take a, a time out and kind of do a little checkup on our emotional and spiritual health. Well, in terms of you know emotional maintaining emotional self care at work, I mean I think it's important um, as much as possible to have positive relationships with the people that you work with, right? So having someone to talk to, whether it's you know one person or a group of people, perhaps that you can go and have lunch with, whether it's to talk about things that are going on at work or perhaps, you know, to a certain degree in your personal life. So having a support network at work, I think is key. And that would include your supervisor too. Having a good relationship with your supervisor as well is important. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming here. You are awesome. Indeed, I'm going to work on my self-care. Before we go, I just, you know, I was thinking like, the self-care needs to also be for the family. And sure. so I want to tell you about this amazing program that's being sponsored by Downstate. It's called the Fresh Air Fund, and I want you to see this clip right now. I'll tell you a little bit more. This is a great experience for my daughter because she gets to uh, interact with other children. She gets to experience the wild. I think it's really fun that I get to meet other children and try different things. They learned a lot. They, uh, they did a lot of swimming activities, um, bike, bike, biking. Um, you know, they developed a, a bond with the family. Uh, they... they uh, there was a lot of activities involved. They went to like water parks. There was so many things that they did. And they, they came home and told me a lot of positive, fun things that you know they might not have done if they weren't involved in Fresh Air Fun. The people that you were there with, they will bring you anywhere you want to go. My daughter was involved in the Fresh Air Fun from last year. She went to sleepaway camp for two weeks and she enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward for another year with Fresh Air Fun. Their mother used to do it as a child. I always heard about it as a child and I always wanted to do it, but my parents didn't qualify. So it's a good experience, you know, my little boys to experience going away from their parents for a couple, couple of days to see how they would survive. <laughs> One of the ways we uh, let parents know how valuable the program is and, and honor their fear about sending their child to strangers is that we really empower our parents. So first we let them know about uh, all of the due diligence we do on host families, which includes a, an interview, a home safety check, a reference check, including one reference who's a professional who works with children, and um, background checks for anyone over the age of 18. 
We also, when we're matching the children to a family, we offer a city family three options. So we tell them about, here's a family in North Carolina, they say they're gonna ride horses and go to the beach, or there's a family on Pennsylvania who lives in a farm. And we give them a couple of different options so that they can choose. And then we really encourage them, as soon as they're matched, to make contact with the family and start to get to know each other to sort of help convince, not convince them, but assure them that their child's in good, safe hands, because that is our number one priority is safety. Well, today I am so excited to be here with you guys on the first day. My name is Abby, and today I will be speaking to two very important guests. I'm so excited right now. So let me do some introductions. Um, first we have Lamont Bryan, and you are a community linkage specialist. Yes, I am. Am I am. right? Okay, and we also have Marky Coleman, and you are the research support specialist. Yes. Am I right? Okay, great. So today, our topic is reentry. And um, what is reentry would be the first thing. Let's get it out there. Exactly what do we mean when we speak about reentry? Well, I guess I'll answer that. Uh, Reentry, as I understand it, is basically coming home from prison and back into the community and basically finding a way to navigate that transition. I would say take your time and be humble. Um, a lot of times we come home and we think that we should be doing a lot of things that people are doing now. But some of these people have been out here for years. Uh, for instance, my first job was welding or uh, dumpsters in a private sanitation company. I learned how to weld in Job Corps and I finished up in prison. But it was something that I had to do. I didn't like climbing into dirty dumpsters, chasing rats, but it was something I had to do in order to be responsible for my family. You know, so I think it's about time we just take their time and be humble. Let's see the big pick. And the pick stands for patience, integrity, and consistency. So he explained in detail why we should have patience. However, uh, integrity is just something that you must have in this environment and being consistent, because you know there's things you're doing, looking for jobs, be consistent, consistently look for these things. And so my thing is just see the big picture. Wow, oh, wow, I mean, you guys have touched on some very important things and um, I think that it's awesome, like I said, what you guys are doing. Um, STAR has so many things to offer and I'm so glad that we're able to discuss some of the specific services that you guys are presenting for the reentry population and the community as a whole, actually, yeah. the community as a whole. So um, I want to thank you guys. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Yes, thank absolutely. You. All right. Welcome back to STAR for Brooklyn. And now, music. Amazing grace. <laughs> shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just how he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Wow! What an amazing performance! Today we have the amazing Verniel Cooper, who is here to share with us how music promotes, how music, engaging in music, singing, is also a part of staying healthy. Can you tell us a little bit about how you use music to stay healthy? I use music as an everyday thing. I've been singing since I was five uh, with my family. So uh, it's something that I do every day. When I'm feeling bad, I sing. When I'm feeling good, I sing. It lifts my spirits, it lifts the spirits of others when I'm around them. It's just something that God has given me and I like sharing it with other people. Mm. And in doing that, I feel better. 
I stay healthy and I also help some people. Okay. Also with us, uh, Magna Robinson on the acoustic guitar. Yay! <laughs> Magna, can you talk a little bit about how music is, it, you know, promotes health for you, how it's therapeutic for you? It's the soul of the life. It is my soul. It's part of me. It's like the guitar just hit into my soul and it's the way that I can say the things without having to use my voice. And the instrument that I choose is the guitar. I think this is a powerful for me. And as Miss Cooper, I always been faced with through with the music, and um, and the guitar was kind of an instrument for me on every time of different side of my life, and that keep me always close to my roots. And so, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter how you feel, you uh, you pick up that guitar and you feel a little bit better. It's amazing how an instrument, a voice. And the guitar can get together and they just like talk to each other and and you feel like what I can those deep feelings that you have even whether it's happiness or, or sadness it's just put it right there and just to listen to Cooper here and make me feel like wow this is the music that I want to put to that voice and uh, it's like we never practiced before we never We've been together for what? 14 years. 14 years and we just put the voice, put the guitar and it just go itself. And, and this is what it does to us, to keep us healthy. And it doesn't matter if we disagree or not disagree with somebody. Once you get into this momentum, it's like nobody take it from you. Miss Cooper, I want to ask you a question about sort of the body and singing and sort of does does singing also have an impact on our bodies in terms of breathing, in terms of posture, in terms of... Well, it does. In, in, a, in order to sing, you have to be able to take in enough air. And when you take in air, you sort of straighten up. Everything pulls up. Um, it's important. Uh, that's why most of the time, if I'm singing, I'm going to sing standing up because it's easier for the air to flow. Mm. Um, it, it's good for your breathing. It, it, it's just good. You know, it just keeps everything moving. Well, uh, guys, thank you so much for stopping by and gracing us with a tremendous performance. Thank Beautiful you. voice. Thank, thank you. you so much, Miss Cooper. And thank you so much, Mother. Thank you. Wow, I learned so much about how to stay healthy. No, it was really great, Tanya. You know, we thank our, uh, our guests. And uh, one thing I want to let our viewers know is that if they have any questions or if they have any more sort of information that they're looking for, they can check us out at starprogram.nyc. Again, that's starprogram.nyc. Uh, great website. They should definitely go check it out. And remember, you can also participate. All you have to do is upload a video to any of the social media outlets connected to Star for Brooklyn and let us know how you stay healthy. Don't forget, hashtag be healthy for you. Christmas, how am I going to like it healthy? Uh, I don't know. There's a tin of cookies over there that I want to get into. I really want one. We should just, just get one. one. Just, just one. one. Okay. Just one. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Adios.